This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. Let us write some basic commands. Print. You type along with me print 180 plus 180. What will be the answer that you will get? Whatever is the 180 plus 180 value. Print. Just kind of we are warming up. Just to make sure that we are comfortable with this whole coding and execution. How am I executing? Tell me, am I clicking on this play button here? No. What am I doing? Control enter. Control enter or shift enter. Shift enter is little uh, useful here because control enter will just execute. Shift enter will execute and create a new cell. Check this out. I will say print. Let's say March and then enter. When I click shift enter, it is automatically creating a new cell. Usually I use shift enter. Now I'm writing division example. See, I just said division example. Did I write this code? I did not write this code. This is a suggestion given by Google Colab using AI artificial intelligence. It has understood what I'm trying to do. It has given me this. I will use the tab here. If I use tab, it will be selected. Shift enter. It will execute. I'll give you a minute so of this time. March will be in double quotes. Uh -huh. So this March has to be in double quote because these are numbers. This is a, a string. So we will go more into that. So if you want to go with non numerical values, it has to be either double code or single code. Go for double code always. So it has to be in double code. Otherwise, it will search who is March. Let's say if I say print X, it will be printing seven, which was there in X. If I say print X, what it will be printing? If I say print I X. What will be the output? Let us try that all of us. So I'm declaring X equal to seven. And first time I said print X, that will print X, which is seven. Now, next time I'm saying print X, what is the output this time around? X. Because X, even though it has been defined, but we are printing a string of X. So what will be the output? Check that all of you try, try to type this X in the course. So X is a string here. This is known as string. There is a dedicated uh, session on the strings that we are going to discuss. As of now, we're just showing some samples. I haven't really started anything serious here. I'm just making you kind of introducing X. you to this whole setup. Uh, sir, I have a question. Okay, carry on. Uh, sir, uh, do we have to define X in every line? Like if we want to print, suppose if we want to print, print X in a different cell. Right. Like if you want to call X again. So, so my answer to that question is always try it out. It's a very simple question where there is a simple answer. For example, I have tried this here. Now the question is, do I need to really define X for me to print X? What will be your answer? Simply you'll write X. If it works, then we don't need to define. If it doesn't work, we have to define. The answer is since you have already defined X, if you are coming to the next cell, try it and tell me the answer. Everybody, what is the answer to her question? Seven. So do we need to like the question is, do we need to define X once again to print it at a later point of time? Or is it sufficient if I define it once? Let us suppose right at the top, I have defined my Y. Okay, I have never printed it. I have defined it. Now after 10 or 15 cells, if I want to print Y, is it sufficient to define it there or do I need to define it again here is the question. Please answer that all of you. Experiment. Uh, it's only only one time we can do it. Only one time you declare once and then use it many times. That is the answer. These are very good questions and the way you should approach them is experimentation. Experimentation will give you more time with the code. The more time you spend, somebody has spent 10,000 hours with Python code. Somebody has spent 5,000 hours. Somebody has spent 1,000 hours. There will be difference in their expertise. Try to spend as much time with Python as possible. Experiment. The system definitely will not blast no matter whatever you do. So go ahead, experiment. Go ahead and try to do whatever comes to your mind. And bug me with all the questions that you have. Are you with me, everyone? Yes. yes, sir. So basically what I'm suggesting is I want you to spend more and more time with Python, experiment a lot, fail a lot of times through those failures, learn, then you will remember for longer duration. Let us see some errors, how these errors appear. So when you say print 300 or 3000 plus 9000, can you tell me what is the error that we are making here? Already we know what is the error. 
what is there capital p capital p but the thing is the output like the error message will not be like you have used capital p or anything usually python error messages are quite lengthy the mistake that people do is they read the error message here but uh, in python you have to read the error message from bottom to top usually we read the error messages from top to bottom yes or no yes that is a yes. regular thing but when you are getting the python errors you read them from bottom to top that trick you must remember so tell me if i say there is an error in this function where do you start do you start let's say there are 20 lines in this are you going to start from line 1 no, no start from line 20 are you with me on this make a side yes. note of yes. that now tell me what is exactly the error print is not defined that means this print function doesn't exist let me show you one more error 66 minus 36 hey what's the error here it looks clean netted commas uh, if i put thing. anything in quotes automatically yes. that will be called as string string can string. you subtract a string which is that is like if i write 36 it is almost same as march there is no difference between march and 36 here if it is in quotes do you agree yes 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 so the error will be again what is the error is the error type error trace back most recent call i python 26 is that the error when you no. are reading error read it from Unsupported. unsupported operation negative integer and string is the is this uh, minus operator supported between integer and string no no makes sense this is how errors come when you are reading errors the point that i want to tell you is read it from bottom to top not top to bottom i think automatically when you are making a lot of errors automatically you will get used to that but initially we will be making the error uh, like whenever uh, somebody is saying that sir i'm getting an error when i ask them what is your error they tend to talk about this one type error trace back most recent call but the thing is you have to come from bottom to top now that is a, like python should have fixed it they should have given the most important message here and then told the rest of the ones but maybe due to various other reasons they give the error messages like this are you comfortable with the error message when you get an error message where to look at you are good with that yes yes sir yes so let us see the assignment that means if i say income is equal to 12000 this is known as assignment what are you assigning what is the variable name here the variable name income. is income. income and what is the value that has been assigned to income 12000 so this 12, is let's say income of let's say mr john john underscore income so what is the variable name john underscore income so next time in the program if somebody is interested in john's income that somewhere we have to paste it or somewhere we have to display it so what will be your option you will write a print john underscore income then it will be printing whatever value that has been assigned we have already seen that in fact can i assign some non numeric value yes possible let us say john underscore date of birth or month of birth that looks odd let's say date of birth is equal to 12 12 20 12 or 20 2002 now what is this is this really date is this called date format if it is in this quotes automatically anything that is in string. quotes string these are all numerics is it number can i say 12 minus 12 minus 2002 no anything yeah. that is in quotes is a string so if you want to print john date of birth you will say john date of birth later on i'm going to talk about date formats they are slightly differently formatted but this is is this date or let's say john date of birth is 12 december 20 or 2002 this is a string so if you are going to give it without the quotes so like a 12 um, that's a good question yeah. tell me what is the approach that we have to follow any question that we get no hesitation Is the system going to blast if we try that? Oh. Yes, sir. No. Are you getting the coding aptitude? How we should approach? We should get hundred questions, but we should find all the answers. Let's try this. Now, let us see. Is there any meaning to that? Twelve is a numeric minus December minus two thousand two, which is a numeric. Uh, yep. December not defined. In case now, if I put it like with twelve, twelve minus twelve. Uh... Okay. again let me try again you are not with me what you should do paste it put 12 12 yes or no help him everybody try to tell me what is the answer for this 12 hmm? yeah. 12 oh. yes. is a numeric value yes. minus 12 kitna hoga 
Zero. 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 Minus two thousand twenty-two. Minus two thousand. So it, in no, our it in our mind, this is a date, but this is a pure mathematical operation. Yes. सिस्टम को कैसा पता चलेगा दैट यू आर एक्चुअली थिंकिंग अबाउट अ डेट अनलेस अनटिल यू टेल इट इन लाइक इट हैज टू बी नॉन एम्बिग्यूस कम्युनिकेशन राइट इफ आई टेल यू सबट्रैक्ट 12 फ्रॉम 12 एंड सबट्रैक्ट 2002 यू विल डू दिस यस और नो यस सर आर यू विद मी सो दैट इज व्हाई फॉर डेट रिप्रेजेंटेशन देयर इज अ डिफरेंट फॉर्मेट इफ यू वांट टू रिप्रेजेंट लाइक अ स्ट्रिंग सो वन ऑफ द सिंपलेस्ट वन इज रिप्रेजेंट इट लाइक अ स्ट्रिंग नाउ डज दैट मेक सेंस यस सर व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग यू इज it's very good to get the questions don't stop at the question try to get the answer fail 3 4 times then get the answer you will be an expert at python not only python any coding language that is my secret so i have started with uh, sas in my initial days and then i have learned sas macros then i went to excel vba coding these are all different different type of coding that i have done sas sas macros excel uh, vba coding sql coding mainframe coding and then uh, i went to r and then uh, now i am doing it in python but i am not afraid of learning any new code maybe in future i may have to learn at least four or five like every 5 to 10 years or 5 to 8 years the coding the paradigm whole changes so if i have to learn any new language also the kind of questions that we get if you keep on searching for the answers you will not get a quick answer but uh, in that process you learn a lot that gives you the confidence but anyway this is just the first session i am trying to impart that attitude in you so that you can quickly learn sir i have a question yeah please go ahead sir in uh, we have learned excel and sql before mm -hmm. so in sql in uh, excel and sql mm -hmm. the date uh, dates were uh, sorry the uh, alphabets were taken as string and characters and in uh, and the numbers were taken as uh, integer mm. and the dates were taken as date time format correct But, uh, here in python the dates is considered as string or no 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 date date time format is also there which i will be introducing to you them okay. so right now uh, even the strings also completely i haven't introduced to you okay so here you can consider this as just a very basic beginning of this so there are uh, formats like like the way you told the uh, data types are there different data types numeric strings dates like that in uh, python also there are different data types like numeric string date and there are other formats uh, like uh, lists dictionaries sets different different formats are there one by one one by one i'll be introducing them to you so, so your sir, question when... will be answered uh, maybe <laughs> in uh, later on session okay so so when we learn it later uh, date time format hmm. so we have to define it in the date time format date time that, format exactly after that we don't have to put them in the codes we don't uh, need we... to put them in the codes in fact once you define them in the date time format if you want to extract month out of it only you can extract it if you want to extract only year you can extract it or if okay. you are given in this format you want to print it in a totally different format dd mm m and then yyyy or just yy like once you define it like date python understands that you are handling dates then it will be able to give you the answer in the format that you are looking for having said that i haven't really gone through the dates maybe that was the third or fourth session before that there are few points that we have to cover then we'll cover that in depth i am very happy that everybody is thinking in the exactly the direction that i want you to think you are raising lot of questions that is the a very good point like try to ask as many questions as possible while you are going through it but when you are questioning make sure that if there is an easy answer you find it on your own okay let us suppose the question was instead of quotes if i do not put quote what happens just quickly check that okay let us do a little bit more about assignment let's say x equal to 20 y equal to 30 now when i say z equal to x into y if i try to print z can you make a guess what will be the like some of you might find this very trivial but for the sake of understanding making sure that everybody is clear what will be the output if i try to print this 16. yeah uh, 600 600 because yeah. x into y it will be printing let us suppose i said uh, z equal to or let's say some k is equal to z into a now print k let's say a and then i'll try to say print k and then i have defined a is equal to uh, let's say 2 so what will be the output a is 2 a into z is 
two into six hundred. Can I get twelve hundred as the output? No. Why? It is What's already showing an error. So in this, it's already showing that we have to put define sure, a before exactly. print only. Hmm. You're you with me. Define... Because in my hmm. mind, I'm thinking that you know what I have defined a, or let's say let me do it this way. I've kept a here, but I haven't executed that. If I execute this directly, is it going to work? No, sir. Let me execute. Yes. Yes. No. Sir. A is a not defined. I'm not. Here, I thought I have defined it. No. Hmm. I have defined, but why it is saying A is not defined? I have defined, but have I executed? Have I told the program? Have no, I told no. the computer? No, no. Let me execute. Now, if I execute, does it work? Yes. Yes. So sometimes you may define, but if you don't execute, it will not work. Let's say if I say k equal to z into i, and our previous discussion was if I say i equal to three, what is the issue here? I is not. We are defined. defining it later. We are defining hmm. it so later. Again, so again, what will be the error not... this time if I execute? Name error. Name error. The I which is not defined. statement execute first in this program. Try to make like... a guess. Is it going to come from bottom to top or top to bottom? Let us suppose when you get that question. So here is the solution. Print a, okay, and then I would say print b. Are you getting what I'm trying to do here? Print C. Now I have a question. Which statement executes? Like, yeah, all of these are there. Maybe it's three are sufficient. Which statement executes first? What will be my answer to this? A. Without printing, tell me what will be the output. Uh, what will be the output a, without a print? B, C. A B C or C B A or B A C. A B C A B C. No matter how many times I do it, will it be the same or it is going to change? It will be same. It will be the same. same. Now let's come back to this question. Is there a possibility for i equal to three to execute first? No. No. No, isn't it? So it is always within a cell. Once you submit it, you are submitting it in this particular sequence. It will be executed in this sequence. Let us see what are some of the wrong naming conventions. You have to help me here. If I say one x is equal to twenty, is that going to work? And then I'll say print one x. Is that allowed? No. Who knows? Showing. Let us try that. Try that. Already you got a hint. What is the hint that you are getting? Are you getting a bad feeling about it? Is it going to work <laughs> or not work? It's not going to work oh. because under a, uh, x it is showing. So the rule rates. number one is when you are defining, when you are assigning something to a new variable, you are not supposed to start with a number. Even if you start it, it will say wrong. It will not allow anyway. You cannot start with a number. If I say x one equal to twenty, is that going to work? Yes, sir. Is that yes. allowed? X one, yes. is that allowed? Yes. Yes. Try yes. that. X one. Is allowed. X dot one is equal to twenty. Is that allowed? No. Before executing, are you getting a hint? Error. Yes. Error. Yes. When you are working on Jupyter notebook, you may not get these type of hints. Are you with me, everyone? The reason yes. why I want you to work on Google Colab is it kind of makes your learning experience little faster. That's why I'm making you work on this. But your assignments, it's better that you do it on Jupyter Notebook. It may not give you these many hints, but that is also like uh, we have to understand. Like if nobody is helping us, how to do it? X dot one equal to twenty doesn't work. X underscore one equal to twenty is that going to work? Yes. Try it out. It's working, sir. It's working. It yes. works. So the question is, can I have underscores in the variable name? Yes, I can have. Can I have dots in the variable name? No. So some of the programming languages like R or some other uh, programming languages like .NET they may allow dots in the variable names, but Python doesn't allow. Now what about space? Can I say x space one is equal to twenty? Print x space one. Does that work? No, no, no. Does that work? No. Oh. Showing error already. It will show an error. Already, it is showing an error. It valid. must show an error. Invalid syntax or something. Do you think a dollar will work? X dollar twenty. Some different type of uh, X dollar one is equal yeah. to twenty. Different type of syntax that I'm trying to use. Yeah. I'm using different different special characters. What yeah. is your opinion on this? Is it going to work? 
no no it's not going to work so if you at all you have to use any special character in the variable name what is the only special character that is kind of followed across the whole python community underscore, underscore. today we have learned only the basics and i'm focusing only on kind of keeping you prepared for this whole journey of learning this uh, python some people uh, have this mindset or they have this fear that i'm not from coding background i'm not from computer science background i'm from a different background i don't know much of coding etc etc and i'm saying that all of us are at the same page everybody in this classroom is at zero with coding okay now it is my responsibility to make sure that you learn coding maybe somebody will take 3 weeks to get comfortable somebody will take 4 weeks or you may take 6 weeks but at the end of 6 weeks you should be able to say i am kind of confident in coding confidence doesn't mean that you write every code confidence means that if i don't know the code i know a way to solve the problem are you with me you are not totally blank confidence means that if i give you a task you will say that i don't know how to proceed if you get an error you don't know how to proceed let's say the same error has come you have tried defining x dot 1 equal to 20 and this is error if you have absolutely no idea what to proceed here i got stuck here i don't know what to do that means you don't have confidence as soon as you see the error then you realize that okay it should have an underscore or somewhere you will search in the internet i tried this code it is not working and then you are trying to solve it that is a confidence so at the end of this course i will make sure that everybody is confident in coding not just python coding coding in general any programming language that you are going to learn there is one coding attitude if you follow that you should be able to learn any new programming language easily so one yeah. just a question like uh, in organization uh, do they allow the access of uh, collab uh, python collab in system no, jupyter notebook because jupyter notebook ha huh, jupyter notebook but sometimes suppose i am writing a code and i am just little bit confused i wanted to go through uh, co co collab in uh, google you will be collab. fired the next day <laughs> the moment you open google collab see sales 2024 of hsbc do you think it is allowed to keep it on google drive and google collab Sales twenty twenty four of HSBC portfolio, sales twenty twenty three of HSBC commercial portfolio. What kind of data is it? Highly highly secure data. The moment yes. you open Google Collab, the moment you copy paste the code, you can be ready with your final mail. Yeah, thank you. It has been a great experience working with HSBC etc etc. Collab only for our learning purpose. I am uh, using it here. it has to, like usually company environments are highly secured and it has to be like that isn't it data is very secured we are not supposed to take the data in fact in the company environments even if you open google collab it will not open anyway google drive will not what... open gmail no, will not i am not putting the data but i am just for my sake i was i'm no, it's not run out of idea and uh, and i wanted to just to get over maybe uh, maybe uh, you can try it on personal laptop when you come home okay Mm. but maybe in some companies they may open like when i was working for uh, hp everything was uh, given access okay it uh, may change from company to company team to team depending on what kind of data you are given access to okay so security will be the only thing that they would be controlling in some companies they may allow also okay now there is one important term that you have to come across or you will come across multiple times that is known as a python package what is a package usually when you are working with python you will be working with python packages a package is a collection of python functions which are pre written code that means the best part about data scientist or the best part about coding in data science is you don't need to code already it was already pre written pre written code was there given by somebody you have to only write that much code that will call the pre written code For example, if you want to find the square root of one seven two nine, you don't really need to write the code for square root. Somewhere it will be there, but it will be part of a package. If you try to execute this, square root not defined. Have you defined this function? You haven't. So it will be a part of package. There is a package called maths. So I would say import math. That is a package. Import math as an alias called empty. Import math. as an alias called empty so basically instead of writing math every time i will write empty maybe let me keep it as simple import math package and then i will write math dot square root now here square root of 1729 did not work but square root of 1729 math dot square root of 1729 has worked what does that mean 
What does that mean? This package I mean, has this function. We have imported that package. We have imported that package. A package is a collection of Python functions. They are properly structured, compiled code. It may contain several sub packages also. It may contain hell lot of functions also. Many Python functions that are available only inside a particular package. Directly, if you write it, it will not work. You have to call that package. If you have math package, then it will work. For example, if I want to find log, can I directly write log of 10? Does it work? Log of 1000? What is the error? Log not defined. Can you solve my error? We have to import log. Import math. Which Do we need to import log function? or the package that package. contains log function. For example, square root did not work. Did I import square root function or did I use the package that contains square root function? Package, package is like a collection of multiple functions. Math is a huge package. It has multiple functions. Since I have imported, so already, so already we have imported the import math. So, so shall directly we need to write again. That's a good question. Tell me the answer. How do you get the answer for that? No, there are two not ways. Not One not is that. without importing, with importing, let us try to do it. So. Without importing, I'm trying it. Without importing in the cell, without importing twice. So already I have imported mm -hmm. math. I'm trying math.log. If it works, it works. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Shall I try this? Yes, sir. Uh, no, I will not. Please try it. Is it working? Do I need to re-import or is it working already? It's working. Yes, it's working. Yes. So usually what people tend to do is they tend to write this all import commands in the beginning itself, all the packages that need to be imported in the beginning. Once you execute it throughout the whole code, you can call them. So the quick answer to that question is once I have imported math, do I need to import again whenever I'm using math? Not required. The general style of uh, working with these uh, packages is import math as MT. You give an alias and then and then you write MT dot log MT dot log of this. Why we do that? The reason is sometimes the package names are quite large. Import math plot lib. When you have such large package names, every time writing that would be quite a cumbersome task. So to avoid that, this is called alias. So whenever I say empty, what is the meaning of it? Empty, there is no package called empty. The meaning math. of it is I'm math. working with a package, package called math. 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 I'm working with a package called math. How many such packages are there? Sir? Thousands and thousands of packages are there. How but are we worried about all those packages? No. no. Only the packages that are connected to data science. Only the packages that will help us to solve some of the problems. Those are the ones. So I'm going to introduce some of the most widely used packages by data scientists one by one, one by one. And within each package, again, thousands and thousands of functions will be there. In those, we will be working only on some of the functions that are very important. So the idea is not to cover the length and breadth of Python. The idea is to cover that much that will help you to cover the length and breadth of Python later on. For example, once I show you how to import one package, now that is the same for any package. Let's say tomorrow, if I want you to import pandas package, which is for data handling, you will simply say import pandas as a PD, something like that. All right. So yeah. empty is, I had just introduced package to you. We haven't gone very much in depth into it. Like everything that I'm telling you right now, there are dedicated sessions for each of these. Right now, just I'm introducing what are these uh, terminologies, okay, at a very high level. In each of them, we are going to go in depth. For example, I have introduced strings to you. Now, how do you do string indexing? How do you do slicing of the strings? How do you work with numbers? How do you work with packages? All of that we are going to discuss very much in depth. This is course is going to be one, one and a half month long with multiple assignments and multiple topics we are going to discuss. I'll make sure that the kind of uh, hardships that I have faced while I was learning, I'll make sure that you will learn all of them easily so that you can be a good data scientist and you can write the code related to data science functions quickly. So some of the packages, like as I told you, there are thousands and thousands of packages, but data scientists don't use all those thousands and thousands of packages. Usually there are five or six top most widely used packages by data scientists, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Scikit-learn, 
math plot lab nltk these are some of the packages that are quite widely used we will have a dedicated session on numpy we will have a dedicated i think a couple of sessions on pandas this is a data handling package the whole machine learning is about scikit learn package we have a dedicated session on matplotlib which is for plotting we have dedicated sessions on nltk and almost all the and there are some packages that are not there in that list that also we are going to discuss we are going to discuss some of the important packages and some of the important functions in those packages for example i'll just show you some examples now you don't need to do this exercise because this package is only when we get into those packages we will get the full clarity i'll just show you some example of some packages let's say if you have numpy package that is a package that is used for working with arrays if you want to quickly create an array if you want to create a matrix or if you want to work with matrix or if you want to work with numbers which are uh, kind of avoiding the loops etc if you want to work with arrays you use numpy as i told you we have a dedicated session on numpy if you want to work with data sets i have a csv file out of that file i want to take some rows i want out of that file i want to take some columns out of that csv file i want to create a new column i want to do sql type of task then i use pandas if i want to create any of the graphs or the charts i use matplotlib there are like dedicated session for it in fact the whole machine learning will be on this particular package called scikit learn so we are going to discuss all of this right now these may not make sense to us because this is way out of the context that whatever we are discussing before going to those packages there are multiple other small uh, items that i have to introduce to you then only those packages will make sense to us so as an introduction i want to tell you that you are going to get started with python the first thing that you you should always think about is whenever i get a question the general attitude or the general way of approaching it is let me quickly ask a sir or let me quickly ask somebody else that is a usual way of learning but that is okay for other subjects but when it comes to coding whenever you get a question let me quickly get the answer without asking anybody so you should always think about without asking anybody can you get the answer if you can get the answer then you are the right person for this field without asking how far are you searching without asking anybody somebody will search for one hour get the answer somebody will search for 2 minutes may not be able to get the answer then ask the person somebody will search for 15 minutes and then could not get the answer somebody will search for 30 minutes the person who searched for one hour he got the answer he not only got answer to one question he also got expertise in that particular question for the rest of the life he will never get that question so one trick is in coding if you want to learn quickly get as many questions as possible don't stop thinking but always think about without asking how do i get the answer maybe you can use chat gpt maybe you can use colab notebook code generation stack overflow is such a very good resource because questions and answers both of them are there and then definitely this is the official documentation will be anywhere there you can also reach out to me but usually since i handle several other things maybe these kind of coding questions i request you to handle on your own you can do that right because if you ask me definitely i can resolve it but the thing is you try to do it on your own okay then if you are not able to get it maybe discuss in the groups okay discuss with your friends and then get the answer if like if nobody is able to answer then you can also reach out to me Are you good with this plan, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes. Are you excited? You must be because yes, this sir. is the coding. As I told you, coding is going to stay with you for lifetime, and any coding platform is fine. Let's say if you have learned coding in Python, let's say if you want to learn any other programming language, if you learn coding in one language, it will be easy in any other language. Tomorrow, if you want to learn Java or JavaScript, or if you are learning .NET, you don't need to learn. But if you are learning it, or if you are learning, uh, uh, let's say R, or if you are learning SAS or any other programming language, you will generally create one reference point, and then you will be able to learn easily. But the first one that we are learning, we have to learn fundamentally the best way. So, what is the structured path that I am giving you? As of now, this whole Python is like an ocean. You might have already realized that. python itself has two different paths one is developer side another one is data science side some of you already know that maybe some of you might not even know that isn't it developer side is different data science side is different now this is a huge ocean there are like i know only 1% of whatever python like can do now remaining 
only based on the need i will touch upon whenever i want i need something then only i'll search for it so it's an ocean so you will be totally confused if you are searching here and there in the internet etc etc so try to follow the structured path that i am giving you at least for this course try not to go and get distracted by several other courses or several internet resources then most of the times people will come and tell me sir i found this somewhere here i am not able to understand better not to look at it immediately first focus 100% on this code or 100% on this course so what you must do at the end of every class is you watch the class video and in classroom exercises are there try to do that code in classroom exercises and after completion of uh, some of the modules i will give assignments probably four or i think five assignments are there complete those assignments that's it. that is your task one already you are at a good place then at the end i will give you what are the next steps that you must follow to become a absolute expert level otherwise this is sufficient for you once you watch the videos do the in classroom exercises and complete the assignments that is sufficient for you because anyway later on we will be using python again in machine learning there you will be putting all this whatever you have learned here to use continue with the next video in the playlist we are covering everything step by step if you have any questions or the comments please post them in the comments window below